Hey everybody, welcome to Brickball. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where I show you guys the coolest custom creations I happen to see people building in LEGO bricks throughout this last week. As always, there's a whole heck of a lot more than just 10 creations listed in this video. You can check out the links in the description below to learn more. And the top link in the description leads directly to our web store. The custom build that went up in the web store this week are the Jedi Starfighters, specifically Obi-Wan's Delta Seven and Anakin's Delta 7B, designed by Lewis. Really, really fun little builds. And if you wanted to get the instructions, you can find them there at www.brickvault.toys. All right, without further ado, let's jump right into the first build of the week. This is Metroid Samus Aran's gunship. Not the first time I've seen somebody attempt this particular ship in Lego bricks. And who knows, maybe all the new Nintendo hype has gotten a few builders really, really into it. This came from L. Diego, and it's a really interesting combination of system bricks as well as some Technic plates and also some weird horn pieces and slopes. This is not an easy shape to try to pull off, but it looks incredibly clean here. And this particular Lego build, I think, really does this ship justice with the bricks. If you want to support it, I believe it is up on Lego Ideas right now. And then from the thumbnail, the next build is Marco Morosi's PNG5 Supreme Mech. I suppose that's one way to grab someone's attention when uh, detailing your custom Lego creation. And of course, it's a joke that it's the most expensive Lego build ever. But the not subtle branding aside, the actual building techniques included for this model are really, really nice. He changes the orientation of the studs really frequently. There's a great combination between system pieces, rubber tires, brick built fig pieces, and even a bit of Technic structural areas as well. I don't know what that that main piece is used for the head or what looks like could be the head or main sensor, but just about every inch of this model has a weird, strange orientation or interesting connection or just odd piece used in its place. Ultimately, we have this kind of heavy yet stylized mech robot, and Marco should be extremely proud of this supreme creation. Up next is a build from Andrew Tate. It is called Teapot Junction, and it's just a fun, simple, yet very well detailed model. It is a station that is no longer in use but now has been converted into a tea room so i believe that train car that you have there has been decommissioned and inside is basically just a small restaurant tea room coffee shop and all in all the colors for this model are quite bright it almost feels like a combination that you would get from a lego creator set but with just a bit more elevated details that make this whole atmosphere feel very uh, innocent and cartoony. And it's one of those custom builds that has the perfectly appropriate technical details used to fill out the atmosphere that I think the designer was going for. It just has a really fun feeling. Now this next model up comes from Brickmaster Ryan. It is called LL372, and it's yet another one of these amazing creations that keeps the classic space color combo alive. According to the description, this is a mid-range cargo ship. It looks very similar to maybe one or two of the classic space sets, though of course the techniques involved to create this build are very very advanced. You'll notice that the wings are built with the studs facing to the side. That interesting, relatively new sloped brick that makes up the edge of the wing is running along there, but the whole thing is built offset. It's just, it just fits so snug and smooth. In fact, a lot of the pieces used to create this ship are relatively new. Some are kind of not that common. And the techniques used to make the shape of this extremely old looking model are about as advanced as you can get. Of course, that's not the only draw to this piece. It is in a huge hangar. I mean, truly, this is actually a massive model. It's totally lit. There's some great scenes with uh, different personnel kind of hanging out, eating, drinking together. And I do like that little nod right in the center for Hitchhiker's Guide. This is one of the more big and complete dioramas of the week. And now we're moving on to a creation that's a little bit unique. We have uh, the Four Seasons by Armored Bricks. There's a full video that actually shows the motion of this model that I will have linked in the description as well. But basically these classical instruments and these four little vignettes that outline each of the Four Seasons 
can move around and spin in motion in tandem together. I don't have to describe which each of these creations represents for their seasons. It's pretty self-evident, but there are some fun techniques here to create, let's say, the, the winter tree. The plates stick off in a kind of fun offset way. The bark on the autumn tree is used with those, I think it's the one by three inverted plate, which is very, very new. And I appreciate the shield pieces in brown for spring. Also, the classical string instruments are definitely a unique unique nod. I especially like the cello. And then somewhat on the theme of seasons, I suppose. Let's move on to the next one from Henjin Quilonis. This is the first Robin of Spring. I don't know about you, but spring has officially hit San Diego for sure. It happened basically overnight. And this is just a wonderful life-size creation of a mother robin feeding her young. There's a lot of subtle details here that I think are worth pointing out. The spring flowers are studded in the opposite direction to make them kind of look like they're shooting out and they're just a different shape creation, which is fun. The techniques used to make the nest are really interesting. It really does look like a real nest of a robin. And then the build technique that shows the spreading feathers as the mother lands is probably one of the best examples of this particular offset plate uh, connection that I've seen. It's incredibly even. It's not easy to get those pieces to look that way. It takes quite a bit of finesse. And in terms of cleanliness and expertise, this is probably one of the more proficient builds of the entire week. Now moving along, it has been an extremely long time since we've showed off any Millennium Falcon builds. Everybody's building them all the time. Thomas Jenkins, a designer we actually work with quite frequently, has once again come at this timeless, classic, extremely well-known ship, but he's used a bunch of techniques that I just haven't seen anybody try with the Falcon before, at least not at this scale, and he also managed to make it look cleaner than how other people build it even at a larger scale. The forked front are bricks built on their sides. There's some inverted pieces, which is kind of nice. He's got the outer edge tiled, and I'm sure with quite a bit of trouble and finesse, he managed to get all of the different plates to match up without hardly any seams to make the slightly slanted and almost perfectly circular pizza shape of the body. Similar to how painters are always attempting a bowl of fruit or Lego builders all have their own way of attempting a tree, the Millennium Falcon is just one of those models that so many people attempt and it's awesome to see such a proficient version of the ship done in a way that just isn't done before. And then from the designer Miro Dudas, we have have a build titled Name is Bond. James Bond. And this build has a lot of fun features to dissect. Of course, you have the artistic, uh, very well-known image of James Bond walking, and you can see him through the barrel of a gun, and there's the rifling. But when you look closely, you'll see that the white outline of the rifled barrel is a bunch of minifigure legs all stacked on top of each other. And then to give the image an even greater context, you are watching everything through the set of a very old-looking TV. Contextually, I'm going to say this is is probably one of those Sean Connery films. And out of any image to add to a television screen, the striking black and white of this particular image I just think works extremely well. Now here is one of my favorite Lego planes of the year 2020. It is called the Sea Dragon by the builder Cylon TW. Every angle of this ship is totally rounded over. There's inverted slopes that clean up the bottom edges. The very tip of either wing has some wonderfully closed off slopes. And I appreciate that the back of the wing actually tapers forward instead of the other way around. It really gives you a little bit more of a clean edge. And as far as I'm concerned, this is one of the best attempts at a Lego plane. The body just feels so full. There's no area of the model that feels like it's lacking or overly detailed for that matter. Now let's finish off this video with another extremely colorful build from the designer David Catella. He says this is still part of his alphabet fighter line. If you haven't seen all of his all of his alphabet fighters, you should probably take a look at the Flickr page linked in the description. But this is his hashtag fighter, or sorry, hashtag wing. I'm sure that is pretty self-explanatory. I also really like the pilots taking selfies. That's a fun little touch. But the building techniques here are just interesting. The color combinations are extremely striking. And I can't tell, but it looks like these two 
hashtag wings can fold and then they create a little cube which is kind of I don't know it's just fun there's always fun weird morphing functions that Dave Catella uh, manages to build into so many of his ships anyways that is going to be it for the top 10 mocks of the week I highly recommend you check out those links in the description there's a whole heck of a lot more than just 10 linked like always if you do have any extra time feel free to pop on over to our web store for custom building Lego instructions if you enjoy our content you can always like or subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. <laughs>